A Year of Learning by Sue and Arnie Garlick, in memory of Malka Perlman and Philip Mann. And the uh, Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, <coughs> Beryl Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Yosef Meir Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Henry Rivka Pearl Rosner Bas Arav Tzvi Hirsch, and a memory of family murdered in the Holocaust. Arav Tzvi Hirsch Ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bad Ephraim, uh, Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Shall assure her children and grandchildren, in memory of her uncle, founding member of VRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael Ben Harav Akiva, Marsha Federbush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Federbush, Oil Pinchas Ben Arav Shimon, Sharon and Fred Lisker, their family and many friends, in memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman, Edel Bas Yaakov, Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedell, Irving and Pearl Kaplan, friends of Avi Gitler, Avi Meir Ben Shimon, and Martha Gitler, Sharon Bas Yashai, friends of Toby Paris, <coughs> Sarah Tova Bat Yisrael Doe, friends of Marco Levy, Marco Bat Yosef, friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim, Charlie Gelfenstein and Sam Levine, in memory of Ramona Levine, Rachumata Bat Asher. We have a month of learning by Mel and Heron Haller, in memory of his brother Yaakov Ben Abraham, Jill and Perry Meltzer, in memory of his father, David Ben Fischel Halevi, and her mother, Bela Bas Abraham. Dov Budlander, in memory of his wife, Udl Bas Yehuda Tzvi. Also a month of learning by Stephanie and Fred Mortman. The partner of her daughter was Albert Sarah Malka. We have a week of learning by Jack Gilman, in memory of his mother, Elka Bas Yishayahu. And we have today, being the sixth, we have a day of learning. Uh, I'm sorry, today is the fifth by Steve and Norman, Norma Hamburger, in memory of his mother, Gila Bat HaKaver Pintas HaKohen. May Shemus have an aliyah, crank or a fear about the Yeshua Shema Tmiya, and the Chol B'nai Yisrael, a good Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> they were running a little late in show this morning, so may take a couple minutes for those guys to get on. I'm not sure where Marvin is this morning. Okay. Took me a couple of extra minutes, but I got my computer on this morning. Good. I'm glad to see. Very good. Okay. We are going to pick up on uh, 85A. Okay, we're a little bit down. It's going to start in Rov Goyim, which is uh, about three, four lines down from the top of the Amu. We'll get try to get as much through as much today. Uh, it's a long Gemara. That's good. like I said. I didn't edit it. I didn't write it. I just tried to teach it. Right? <laughs> okay. Remember, we were dealing with the issue that, in essence. We clearly spelled out the idea that the uh, we don't follow the uh, general principle of Rome when it comes to uh, issues of uh, life-threatening uh, considerations, and we came to the example of uh, 
a building or a wall or something falling, debris falling on a person, uh, tied up with what Zev asked yesterday. Okay, is he Zev is on about Shabbat? Okay, whether it's Jewish or non-Jewish. And clearly I told him today's Gemara is going to give us uh, in some ways an answer to what I felt was his question yesterday. <clears throat> so the Gemara we're picking up, as I said, about three, four lines down on the um In Rov Goyim, Goy, this was if the foundling child, if the majority of the people in the town were Gentile. Goy, Lamai Hilkata, why is that the law? On what basis? Amara Papa says, Papa, Lahachilo Nevelo, that one is able to feed him non-kosher food. In Rav Yisrael, if the majority of the population were Jewish, Yisrael, why is that the law? To return to him any lost objects. Now, what does this imply? It seems to imply that the law of returning lost objects only applies to Jews and doesn't seem to apply to Gentiles. So we continue in the Gemara. Mechza am mechza, if it's half Gentile and half Jewish. Yisrael, <coughs> we consider the founding in the status of a Jew. Lamai hilchata, and for what purpose is that law then? Amar reish lakish l'nizakim, in terms of issues of damages. Echidami, how is that possible? How do we determine that? Inema de negache Torah didan le Torah dide. If we're going to say it's a situation where our ox gored his ox, right? Naite raaya finish call. If that's the case, let him bring proof of his Jewishness. Okay. And then he can receive money. Right? Because when we say someone demands money, I love Haraya. Okay? Love, Tzricha. No, that's not the reason, says the Gemara. The Nagachi Torah Dide, the Torah Didan. No, it was a situation perhaps in the Zakin where his ox gores ours ox. Palga. Then it would appear that uh, in that case, right? He would have to pay half. Yeah, he right. Idach palga, the other half. What about that? Namely, we might say then to him, Aiti raaya, the love Yisrael ana ushkol. Okay, that if that's the case, right? Bring proof that I'm not a Jew, all right? And take the money. Okay, if that's the case. Right. Now, so the Gemara. Back to our mission. What happens then if uh, a wall or a rock slide occurred? My Amar, what is it then is he trying to tell us? They're telling us a statement in a Lomabaye uh, fashion. Okay? It's not necessary to say X because so on. Lomabaye okay? Kamar. Loma bai safeku, right? Sham safek a notion. It's not necessary to say, or it's needless to say, it's uncertain whether he is there, okay? Or he's not there. The iite chaihu, that if we say he's there and he's alive, the mafakhin, that we remove the debris. But even if it's uncertain if he's dead or he's alive, we remove the debris. And it's certainly not necessary to say if there's an uncertainty whether he's alive or dead and Jewish, right? We we'll certainly must go ahead and remove the debris. But 
But even if we are not sure, and it's a questionable whether it's uncertain whether he's Jewish or Gentile, we remove the the debris. And this is what I saw, Zev, as the answer to your question. We know that there are Jews there, okay? We don't- I was know. asking another question though. Yeah, we don't know if when we find the bodies, whether they might be Jewish or not. Uh, I was asking question. another question. Suppose, yeah. suppose the experts determine that it's necessary to demolish the building. They did. I know they did they demolish the building. However, suppose, that means the workers cannot work anymore. Well, no, that's not, the point. Not I safe. Can. No. Suppose the experts determine that it's not safe for the workers to be there. Ah, that's a different story. That may be a different story. But in this particular case, right, they demolished the building. They did it in such a way that they were able now to have the workers get back almost immediately after the demolition to continue the search. Okay. Okay. We said if they find him alive, they continue to remove the debris. Metzauhu chai pshita, isn't that obvious if you find a boy? Lo tzricha, no, it's necessary to tell us this. Da afilu lechai sha'am, that even if it's only going to remain alive for a short period of time. Okay. So going on then, says the Gemara, ve'im meit yemichem, the Mishnah said, and what about the fact that our Mishnah said that if they found him dead, we leave him. In other words, we don't continue to remove the debris on Shabbat or on Yom Kippur. Okay? Ha-nami pshita. Isn't that also obvious? Lo tzricha. No, it was necessary to teach this. The Rabbi Yehuda ben Lakish. So based on a view of Rabbi Yehuda ben Lakish, whose opinion was found in the following brighter. Tatanya ein matzilin et hamet mepnei hadroika, that we don't save a deceased from a fire. Amar Rabbi Yehuda ben Lakish, that was Tanakhama, and Rabbi Yehuda ben Lakish responds, shamati shamatzilin et hamet mepnei hadroika. We, he learned that we do save a deceased body from the fire. Why? Va'afilu Rabbi Yehuda ben Lakish, lo ka'amah, and even he did not say this other than the following situation. Mitok she'adam bahul al meto, because a person is, I won't use the word confused, but he's emotionally distraught regarding the death of the life. Ilo sarayt lay, and if you don't permit him to go ahead and do that, he might go ahead and try to put out the fire, which is a greater uh, over, a greater uh, transgression of Shabbat. But here, here, asks the Gemara, if you don't permit him to do it, okay, what are you going to... Uh, What's going to, what might he do? Tanu Rabbanu. And so the rabbis bring a bright thing. Hechan hu bodek. Okay, so how do we know then if the person is alive or dead? Right? Ad chotmo. Okay, we check up to the point of his breathing from his nose. The yeshom wing, ad libo. But there are others who say, we can check breathing up to his chest. Badak umatsa el yonim meitim. Lo yomar kvar meitu hatachtonim. Why? Because, and this is also applies to the current surfside situation. If you find that people on the upper levels are deceased, don't say, well, Certainly, then the people on the lower level must be deceased. Why? Says the Gemara. Maasehaya. Here, Zev, with another point. Umatsu el yonim meitim, v'tachtonim chayim. 
that there was an actual incident where the people in upper levels were not found alive, but people lower levels were found alive. Okay? Now, again, remember we said if people were not crushed by the concrete and they somehow could have had an air pocket, we don't know. Nema Hani Tanai, Ki Hani Tanai. Shall we say then, asks the Gemara, that these Tanaim, okay, who dispute whether to check the breathing at the nose or the chest in and out, are similar to other Tanaim, okay, who have a disagreement about when a fetus is formed, right? The Tanya as taught elsewhere in the Brahita, mehekan havalad notsar, from where is the fetus developed? Me will show from its head, shenema mima'eimi atagozi, okay? Namely, you, who, you are he who took me out of my mother's womb. And then immediately afterwards it says, gazi nizreich, Right? You cut off your hair and cast it away. Abba Shaul Omer Meti Buro. But Abba Shaul disagreed and he said, no, the place a person is created from the area of the navel. And from there, his limbs develop in one direction and another direction. Okay? Now, afilu tema Abba Shaul, says the Gemara. You might even say Abba Shaul, okay? Says that the, is uh, uh, from the navel. Ad kan lo ka'amar Abba Shaul hakan. Ela ila inyan yitzira. There he only said it in regards to the fact that, right? Checking the nose for signs of life Okay, was the fact that uh, that would have been for that situation, but formation of the fetus was from lower, and therefore maybe he could check up to the chest. But there, regarding the formation of the fetus, we're saying it comes from the nefesh. But in regards to situations of life threatening, even Abba Shaul would acknowledge, right? That the essence of his life, okay, can be identified from the breath of the nostril. All in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life. Now, Amara Papa says, Rapapa, Machloket, Mimata, Lamata. Says, Rapapa, this was a argument in terms of where they started to remove debris from off the body. Did they start from head going down? Or did they start from the feet going up? Okay. If we say it's from right from the bottom up, lamata, but from up going down, Badakle once he checked then at the level of the nose, Shu at that point he need not necessarily go further. Again, that if the life breath can be checked through there, right, then and we see the person is no longer alive, we're not expected to remove the body, okay, on Shabbat or Yom Kippur. Okay, and be Mechalel, the Yom Tov in that situation. Okay, but when we don't know, that would be the implication that we would continue. Okay, and we see another story. And Rabbi Yishmael, 
for Rabbi Akiva, for Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah, the three of them, Mahalchim Badera, were walking together along the road. And behind them, the Levi Hasada, for Rabbi Ishmael ben Osho, Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah, Mahalchim Echorehi, and uh, Levi Hasadar, that was his uh, nickname. Levi, the one who either arranged things or uh, he uh, arranged plated garments. And Rabbi Shmuel, the son of Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah. Okay, so they were the students walking behind their rabbi. Right? And what happened, says the Gemara? Right? And the students asked the following Shaila to their teachers. How do we know? What's the basis? Textually, that we could argue that saving a life overrides Shabbat. Okay? So, we've got a variety of answers. Na'ana Rabbi Yishmael va'amun. Rabbi Yishmael answered with the following pasuk. Im b'machteret yimotzei haganav. If you find a thief breaking in from underground, right? Okay, and whereas it's uncertain whether whether he's coming for the money, or if it's uncertain whether he's coming and is prepared to kill somebody, and we say that bloodshed renders the land impure. Right? And it causes the Shekhinah to depart from among the Jewish people. Right? We're told, okay, that under those circumstances, the person it's, is permitted to save his own life. Okay? Under those circumstances. The pikuach nefesh shedochet hashabbat. All the more so then to that saving a life should override Shabbat. Rabbi Akiva gives a different answer. Na'ana Rabbi Akiva ba'amar. B'chi yazid ish alayehu v'gomer. Me'im mizbachi tikachinu lamut. And if a man comes, okay, upon his neighbor to slay him, Right, and the Kohen has testimony that he can give. You can take the Kohen from the altar, okay, so that that person to determine whether that person dies or not. Me'im right? is What does it mean from the altar? Velo me'al is but not from on the altar. In other words, has he done, did that Kohen actually begin doing the avoda or not? He says, Lo shanu right? Namely, according to Rabbi Barbarthana, Rabbi Yochanan said they only taught the fact that they would remove the Kohen from the uh, Mizbeach, okay? If he, we knew that he clearly had testimony that would result in the death penalty for the person committing the act, right? As we go to the next, aval um, But what about to preserve life? Afilu me'al mizbachi. Even then, to preserve his life, even more, then we would take him from doing the avoda, as if he were in the midst of it. Umaze, and what do we mean by this? Shesafek yesh mamash pedvaral, safek ein mamash pedvaral. Because we aren't certain, nevertheless, whether there's any real reality testimony in his words. We're uncertain if there isn't any substance, any real testimony in his words. Va'avoda doche Shabbat. And we say that the carrying out of the 
divine service override Shabbat. Kal v'chomer, the pikuach nefesh shedochet Shabbat. How much more so then? If you can take him from that avoda, certainly then he argues that saving the life overrides Shabbat. Now another possible answer. Now Anna Rabbi Elazar Ba'ama, he gives a third possibility. Uma Mila, with regards to circumcision, we see Shehi Echad Mimatayim Ba'arba'im Ushmona Evarim Shaba'adam, that the performance of circumcision okay, is on one of the 248 limbs of the body, Docha et Shabbat, and that overrides Shabbat. Kal v'chomer l'chol gufo. How much more so if we're talking the entire body? Shadokhe et Shabbat, that that should override Shabbat. Now, Rabbi Yossi the Rabbi Yehuda Omer says it to us as follows, okay? Regarding the same top, the Pasuk says, et Shabtotai tishmoli, that you should observe, keep my Shabbat. Yechol, Yechol. We might think then that that verse then would apply to all situations. Talmud Loma, ach, but the text says, but, namely that chilek, it makes a distinction. Rabbi Yonatan ben Yosef, Omer, ki kodesh hilachem. The Pasuk says that it is, Shabbat is sanctified, sacred to you. He, Mr. Rabbi Yadchem, it is given into your hands to become sanctified. Velo atem misurim biyada but you are not handed over into the hands to die on Shabbat with Kiddush Hashem, sanctification of the name. Let's go on. Right? Rabbi Shimon ben Manasya discussing the same topic, says, Omer, v'shamru b'nei Yisrael Shabbat, that the children of Israel kept, maintained, observed the Shabbat. Amra Torah, says the Torah, Chalal, chalel alav Shabbat echad. One may desecrate a single Shabbat. Kadei she yishmor Shabbatot harbe. In order to observe multiple Shabbat. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmor. I havei hatam hava amina. If I were there, he says, I would have brought the following. Didi. That my answer, okay, is better than their answer. Okay, and it says live by them. And not die by them. Okay, now we see that after all these possible answers, we get some comments. Amar Rava says Rava. Akulhu to all of the others, there's a response, a refutation. Bar with the exception of that of Shmuel, delete lei where there is no refutation. The Rabbi Yishmuel, with regarding that explanation of Rabbi Yishmuel, Dilma Kidarava. Perhaps I could argue as Rava might argue, the Amar Rava, as Rava said, Ma'itama the Machtel. What then is the rationale behind the issue of one sneaking in, right, breaking in? Chazaka ain't a dam ma'amid atzmo al mamana. That we have a chazaka, a presumption that a person, right, doesn't restrain himself from protecting. His property. Bahai meda yada, the kaila ape. And this one, okay, namely the thief, would know, okay, that the person would be, so to speak, standing there opposite him. Vaamu, ikaila apai, 
maybe the thief then would say, if he's opposite me, katil mulei, okay, I will kill him. If someone comes to kill you, Hashkem Lahargo, rise up and kill him first. But Ashkatan Vadai, Safek Minala. And I would say that applies only in a situation of certain danger. But if I find there's questionable danger, who's to say then that that's appropriate? So I can challenge the example of Machtel. How about Rabbi Akiva's example? Rabbi Akiva Nami, with regards to his proof also, one might refute it. Dilma Kida Abaye, as could be done by a statement based on Abaye. The Amar Abaye, as Abaye once said, Masrin and Lay Zuga the Rabbana. Okay. He argued as follows, namely, that we could send a pair of rabbis to meet, talk to the Kohen. Leda imam if his testimony is certain. Va'ashkakan vadai, and if I find that it's certain, right, then I will take him from the altar. Safek minala. But if it's questionable, if it's uncertain, what's the basis then? The kuhu ashkechan vada. And all of these, again, this is Rava's argument, were situations where we found proof, okay, and it was very clear, it was certain. Safek minala. But when there's a doubt, what's our basis? But that explanation of Shmuel, certainly, okay, we don't have any refutation. Okay. Amar Ravina. Ve'itema Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. So Ravina says, and others say it was Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. Tava Chada Pilpalta Harifa. Better good, so to speak, is one um, pepper, spicy pepper, than a full basket of, let's say, squash or, or uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh, um, you know, something similar to squash. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, so so Rabbi Green, the question is this the upcoming Shabbos, if they're still digging in that pile of rubble, would you give a Shoma Shabbos person the heta to go ahead and keep on digging? Is that in keeping with our halacha? I would say yes. I would say yes. It's, it's certainly because the possibility is there that even as right. slim as it may be in our eyes. You saw the Gemara says that possible situation based on a real maaseh that people above die, but people below did not. And so therefore, on that possibility, I would say the Gemara suggests to do so, yeah. But, but to recover bodies would not be... And that, that's if, if that's something else. Then that's, that's another issue. Then maybe the Shomer Shabbos person could not remove the body, but you allow the, someone else to do that. Right. Okay. All right, let's go on with our next Mishnah. This is going to give us, bring us through, I think, to the end of the, to the end of the um, right? Okay. It's a little different uh, discussion now, this new Mishnah. We have two kinds of offerings here. One is a sin offering, right? And one is a certain offering, a guilt offering, okay? In other words, the person is aware that they committed an act that requires an asher. Both of these can bring atonement. Not only that, says the Mishnah, 
Mita Vyom Hakipuri. But a person's passing away, and the Yom Kippur also. Mechaprim Im Hachuba. They also can bring atonement when they're accompanied by repentance. Shuva Mechaperet Al Averot Halot. Repentance, I'm going to say, in and of itself, okay, can bring atonement for lesser sins, minor transgression. Al ta'ase, whether it is a, a transgression against a positive commandment or against a negative commandment. hutole. But on more stringent transgression, it sort of holds them in limbo until Yom Kippur comes. And then Yom Kippur, in addition to Shuba, may bring atonement for the more stringent uh, transgression. Ha'omer echatev one who says, I will sin, and then I will repent. Echatev ashu, continue to do the same thing. Ein must be kin biadola asot shuba. Okay, but he is not given the opportunity to do chuba. Echatev v'yom hakipurim mechaper. I'll sin, and the day of atonement will bring a, a, bring atonement. Ein yom hakipurim The day of atonement does not bring atonement. Ave rot shabain adam lamakom. Those transgressions between an individual and Hashem. Yom hakipurim mechaper. The day of atonement can bring atonement. Ave rot shabain adam lechave rot. Sins between a person and one's neighbor, ein yom ha-kippurim mechaper ad shiratze et chavero. The day of atonement does not bring atonement until one, I'm going to use the word, satisfies, supplicates, appeases one's neighbor. Okay? And we go on. Darash Rabbi Elazar. Rabbi Elazar said, Ben Azariah, the following. We have a pasuk that tells us, Mikol chatotechem lefnei Hashem titaro. From all your sins, you shall be cleansed before Hashem. Averot shabain adam lamakom, yom hakipurim mechapeh. Those transgressions between a person and Hashem, the day of atonement brings atonement. Averot shabain adam lechaverot. Transgressions between a person and one's neighbor. Ein yom hakipuri mechaper ad shirat se'et chaverot. The day of atonement does not bring atonement until one, this we said, supplicates, appeases one's neighbor, the other person. Amar Rabbi Akiva says, Rabbi Akiva, Ashrechem Yisrael. Happy, fortunate are you, O Israel. Lefnei miyatem mitaharim. Okay. Before whom do you become uh, 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 pure? Come from left, more mixed. Aray. etchem. Who is the one who purifies you? Avichem sheba shamayim, your father in him. Shana amar, as it says, v'zarakti alechem mayim tahorim. Utaharti. I'll sprinkle purifying water on you and you will be purified. Va'omer. And then a further verse says, Mikve Yisrael Hashem. That Hashem is like a ritual bath. How? Ma mikve metaher et tmein. The same way the ritual bath purifies those who are impure. Afa Kaddish Baruch Hu. Metaher et Yisrael. So likewise, the Kaddish Baruch Hu purifies the Jewish people. Now, 
we get to our Gemara, and the Gemara notices that remember the beginning of the Mishnah said that two kinds of offerings, chatat, a guild sin offering, and asham vada, and a definite guild offering, can bring atonement. What about another kind of asham? Okay, right? Let's see. So the Gemara picks up. Asham vadai in. Yes, when it's a definite, right? Asham offering, a definite guilt offering. Yes. Asham talui, no. But if it's a, I don't want like the word indefinite, an uncertain, an unclear guilt offering. In other words, it's unclear to the person whether they've actually committed an act that requires that kind of offering. Okay. Vaha kaparak tivabe, says the Gemara. But here we see that with regards to that, it does spell out that there's a tone. Hanach mi kapre kapara gemara. There, okay, we're talking about a situation where that atonement comes based where it's written, such that it is very clear that it is to the person that, that it's going to bring atonement because it's clear they needed to bring a specific asha. Asham talui, a no mechaper kapara but a unclear and uncertain uh, sin offering, I'm sorry, guilt offering, that does not bring complete atonement. Inami okay. hana. Or perhaps, says the Gemara, we can explain it this way. Ein acher mechaper kaparata. Okay. Something else does not bring okay, atonement right, for one's sins other than these two offerings. Asham talui a uncertain or an unclear, right, offering, right, that case, guilt offering, what? Acher mechaper kaparatan. There we say, we learned in the Mishnah, okay, that it does not seem to bring, okay, this. That's not. Why? Because it says, Okay. That the obligation of bringing a sin offering or a definite guilt offering, okay. and one then, the day of Yom Kippur has passed, right? What happens? One is still obligated to bring the offering. Ashamot tzluyim, tzluyim. But if it's unclear, it's an uncertain offering, right? Sort of it's just to cover basis. One is exempt, and it's past Yom Kippur, one is exempt. Now, we come back now to our Mishnah. Okay? So, we can see that the Mishnah now is going to cite the next example, mita v'yoma kippurim mechaprim im hatshuva, the death in Yom Kippur will bring atonement, a law associated with, accompanied with repentance. Im hatshuva, im, with repentance, yes. Befnei atzman, by themselves, no. It seems no. Neima delo karebi. But if we say that, then that does not agree with the opinion of Rebbe. The Tanya, because we have taught in the Blaita, Rebbe Omir, Al Kol Averot Shebatola, on all of the transgressions in the Torah, Bein Asa Tshuva, Bein Lo Asa Tshuva, whether the person did repent or they did not do repentance. Yom HaKippurim Mechapen, that the Day of Atonement brings atonement. 
חוץ מפורט אור ומגלה פנים בתורה, with the exception, we might say, of somebody who totally rejects the role, the yoke of the Torah, ומי פר ברית בשר, okay, or also, what else do they do? They also, in this case, uh, violate, let's say, the covenant, right? Okay, in that situation, okay? And, uh, right? She'im asa tshuva, that then, if they did repentance, yom ha-kippurim mechaper. Rabbi then, Green, does that include does that include Odomit Ben Odom Machavero? Good question, Zev. I would say let's see if it refers to it. My impression would be since our Mishnah said that it has to be Ad Shiratse et Chavero, that that's an important criteria. Okay. שאם עשה תשובה, יום הכיפורים מכפר, ואם לא עשה תשובה, אין יום הכיפורים מכפר. But if he didn't do repentance, then, right, what happens? יום הכיפור does not bring a tomb. אפילו תמה רבי, that says the Gemara. But you might even say רבי would accept this, right? Is that the case? Shuva baya yom hakipuri, namely that according to Rebbe, we might say that repentance, right, is still necessary in uh, coordination, so to speak, with yom hakipuri. Yom hakipuri lo baya shuva, but yom hakipuri does not necessarily by itself, okay, require tshuva. Let's see if that's the case as we go on. Tshuva mechaperet al averot kalot, al aseh al lo ta'aseh, said the Mishnah. Right, that tshuva atones for minor transgression, whether they positive or negative. Hashta al lo ta'aseh mechaperet. Now that we've said that it will atone for a negative commandment, I'll say mi ba'aya. Is it necessary to say that it would atone also for being over on a positive commandment? Amar Rav Yehuda, hachi This is what it means to tell us. Al say va'alo ta'ase shenitak la'ase. That's referring to a positive commandment, okay, as well as a case where one has transgressed a negative commandment that is, let's say, corrected or uh, reestablished within to a, be a positive act, a positive mitzvah. So the Gemara picks up and says, "Va'alo ta'aseh gamor lo." So are you therefore saying, okay, to answer that point, that on a situation where it's a completely full-fledged negative commandment, it won't bring atonement, or mean who? But we'll challenge this, okay, with the following contradiction. Eluhain kalot, these are what considered minor transgressions. Ase velota ase. There are some positive and some negative mitzvahs. Okay, we'll just go over a tiny bit. Chutz milotisa, with the exception of the love of lotisa, you don't take a shem's name in vain. Lotisa, the whole the damilu, and any other mitzvah, okay, negative mitzvot, right, prohibitions that are 
similar to it. And so finishing up now, Tashma, listen to the following Brighton, Rabbi Yehuda Amer, Kol Shahu Miloti Sa Ulamati. Anything from that section that says start taking Hashem's name in vain and below, Kshuva Mikapel. Okay, those are less severe prohibitions. Then repentance will too. Miloti Sa Ulamala, from the fact that it says not taking Hashem's name in vain. And before that, above that, shuva tola. Shuva then sort of holds it in abeyance, in in uh, in uh, limbo. The yom kippurim mechaper, and yom kippur then comes to bring atonement. Lo tisa bechol dedami. Okay, again referring to the fact of we say lo tisa, don't take a Shem's name in vain and anything similar to it. So we're going to stop there before we get to the next brighter because that's going to take us then into a longer discussion. Right? Okay, so Zev, does that seem to sort of answer your question? I'm not sure. Right. Because it does the, the Gemara specifically said that forgiveness or repentance does not include Right, that's why I said that it would seem to me that uh, the Ad Shinyuritsa et Chavero clearly spelled out in the Mishnah. But we're going to have to get to the part of the Gemara that deals with that to clarify. All right? Yes. Okay. Well, suppose, suppose you ask someone that you've uh, hurt and you ask for repentance, and they don't forgive you. Oh, right. That's the problem, right? Yes. That's the problem, if they don't forgive you, okay? But you look, you still made an effort to do tshuva. So may, maybe you need, uh, there's one that says Yom Kippurim Misa. Maybe you need Misa then to, to forgive. Well. That should, uh, we'll have to see further in the Gemara, all right? Yes. Okay, everybody, take care and stay well.